Good morning. My name is Jamil Rabay, and with me are two other team members, John Ben Wright and Andre Zanulin. And our recommendation for CBNI is to buy. CBNI is a multinational conglomerate which operates from more than 80 locations globally, employs approximately 23,000 people worldwide. Uh, CBNI operates in three specific business segments project engineering and construction, steel plate structures, and luminous technology. Uh, industry analysis. The heavy construction industry has shown tremendous growth. Uh, in the first half of 2012, spending was up three, three, from 3.1 3 trillion to 3.39 trillion in 2012. Uh, at, at the same time, U.S. employment grew by 1.03% to 829,000 employees. In Canada, the employment rate also improved by 1.75% in the second quarter. This was driven by global demand for construction equipment from the U.S., which increased by 18% in 2011. Uh, in the Asia-Pacific region, we also saw growth of uh, projected, uh, projected aggregate GDP of 1.6 trillion. Uh, expected annual investments in that region of 800 billion, 2010 through 2020. Uh, in Singapore, India, and China, we also saw uh, a lot of growth in the markets, uh, 16 to 21 billion in contracts awarded in Singapore, India and China producing some of the most dynamic markets in the heavy construction industry, and China anticipated as becoming the largest construction market in the world in 2018. Uh, how does this impact CBNI and what is their competitive position? Uh, first, 45% of LNG backlog for CBNI is primarily concentrated in the Asia Pacific as well as 15% of their processing oil and gas is also primarily concentrated in the Asia Pacific, and 15% of their oil sands is primarily concentrated in Canada. With CBNI having 700 projects in backlog, with 85% of those projects comprise of projects outside of the U.S., and in those areas where the market growth is slated to be the greatest, CBNI is in a very strong competitive position. Uh, when we look at the financial analysis, we did have a concern with working capital. Uh, when we saw the working capital was, was negative 82 million, the current ratio and the asset test was also below industry averages, we were concerned. However, uh, when we looked into further investigation, we realized that CBNI offers a wide range of contract options. And one of those options is the cost reimbursable contract, which consists of 45% of their backlog. Now, under the cost reimbursable option, you have a situation where the customers provided uh, greater influence over when work will actually be done. And so as a result of this, CBI has such a widespread and such a diversity, uh, I think it is common that you can expect some fluctuations in their revenue recognition. Uh, and you can see the same thing with companies like McDonald's. It is oftentimes they also function from negative working capital. But when we look at all the other ratios, solvency, profitability, market prospects, uh, we were impressed and we, and we didn't see any reason to be concerned about this liquidity issue. And when we compared them with their other competitors, we also saw that CBNI was in a very good position. The, R the ROE was above average. The net profit margin was way above average. Their, their PE ratios were very competitive. And their market capitalization, particularly when they acquired Shaw, gave them the lead and gave them a greater market share. So with, with all that being said, we believe that CBNI is in a very strong financial position. And, uh, and with that being said, I want to pass the floor back up, uh, to my colleague, Jonathan Wright, who will take us further into the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Jamil. My name is Jonathan Wright. First off, let's break CBNI into strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. CBNI has a high health, safety, and environmental, or AHG, a, HSE, performance. With that being said, in a 2010 trend survey, 50% of entrants in the ENC industry stated that safety played a huge factor in determining a contractor. Weaknesses. CBNI has weaknesses in contracting terms, but keep in mind they have a receivables to sell ratio of 10.9% with an average collection period of 39 days, whereas the industry average is just over 46 days. Opportunities. CBNI has 80, approximately 80 locations worldwide, so they can, they can mobilize to any any project at any time. Threats. With a large global presence come many threats. Uh, may that come in the form of new uh, environmental laws and regulations. Here you can see the CBNI has a launch time rate of 0 0.02 compared to the industry average of 0 0.07. So coming back, safety plays a huge concern. Uh, safety is a huge strength of CBNI. They pride themselves on it. 
Moving on to the five forces model. The five forces model rates CBNI on a scale from one to five, with five being the most favorable for CBNI. It focuses on the areas of competitive rivalry, bargaining power suppliers, bargaining power customers, threats of new entrants, and threats of substitutes. As you can see, threats of new entrants is a very little concern to CBNI. We believe this is due to them being so diverse. Moving on to the DuPont analysis. The, the beauty of this is the ability to see where fluctuations in our ROE are coming from. And as you can see, CBNI is looking at, is, at a high growth rate of ROE. We believe this is due to consistent net margins, uh, an increase in total assets, and a slight increase in an equity multiplier. We believe these are all just good signs of expansion. This time I'm going to hand it over to Andre. <coughs> Hello. Um, to value CDNI, we use three approaches. First is the free cash flow to equity model, price to earnings, and price to sales. We weighted all of those models to find out the target price of $84.8. We gave the highest weight to the free cash flow to equity model since this model is based on fundamentals and uh, in, 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 in include in itself the all growth rates and the trends from the company. Moving forward with the free cash flow to equity, here you can see the projected revenue growth with compounded average growth rate of 17% for the projected five year. Uh, we used two stage model for free cash flow to equity, uh, which consists of the total of those five year horizon um, and the terminal value. And the total of five year horizon is 1.7 billion and the terminal value is 8.9 billion. <coughs> Uh, in this slide, you can see those effects per share basis with the five-year project cash flow of $14.1 and the terminal value of $17.7 .7, with a cost of equity of 17.27%. This is all the result of the new awards project and the central average growth rate. In this slide, you can see the price to earnings and price to sales ratios. We uh, use the wide variety of competitors which are uh, which we gather through online and all other resources to find out. And uh, you see the prices are different, and but we solve that problem by, by giving them equal weight to those problem in the, our target price. Here you can see the sensitivity analysis for the free cash flow to equity model. Uh, we did it, we changed the terminal value growth rate and the weight average cost of capital. And in a green bracket you can see the best case scenario and the uh, uh, green one is the worst case scenario. And you can see the big range of the prices in a blue, blue square in the middle, which still represents the high tendency to buy the CDNI. However, um, environment possesses an, um, a lot of risk. One of them is the macroeconomy risk, because non-company non is protected from the financial crisis, which was several years ago, as Jamil said, uh, their liquidity problems came basically just from this crisis. Business risks. Uh, it's one of, the, one of the risks of the CBNI that they highly dependent on the big project, major projects. And as they invest a lot of money to this, uh, with possible lawsuits and regulation, it can be a risk to them. Leverage. They will acquire Shaw using the huge debt, while currently they have no debt at all. So this is a risk to competition. CBNI um, operates in a highly competitive market uh, where there are a lot of big players and small players. So the competition is always a risk for the CBNI. And I want to add something to the leverage. Uh, the plus here is that their LPC score is 3.44, which means that their uh, bankruptcy is low. And uh, taking everything into consideration, sustainable business model, valuation result, experience management, promising, promising awards, and strong financial, our recommendation is to buy. Thank you, and the floor is open to questions. Yeah, I kind of, uh, you kind of jumped right into the middle, so uh, maybe I'm, I'm a little slow, but what is actually this company doing? Uh, Jamil is our expert. CBNI is, uh, like I said, it's focused on three business sectors. And that's a question, thank you. Uh, the project engineering and construction uh, that offers uh, the energy. Uh, 
these three business sectors. Uh, project engineering and construction which provides engineering, procurement, fabrication, and construction services. Steel plate structures will provide a mix of EEP and C, hydrocarbon, water, and nuclear facilities. And then there's the Lumis Technology, which provides licensing, equipment for hydrocarbon refining, petrochemical complexes, as well as power generation. And these are the sectors that CBI functions in. So they actually produce the steel plates? Or? No, sir. They actually service the companies that, that, uh, that need the steel plates. Uh, they provide the, the, the well, let me correct that statement. They do produce the actual pipelines itself, but the actual raw material, no, not the steel. They don't do the mining. That's, that's what I meant to say. But uh, they provide those services for the nuclear facilities, for the water, for the hydrocarbon, and also the, uh, the, 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 the EPMC. If I might, the steel plate structures is a lot of, um, a lot of that has to do with uh, tanks. They build a lot of metal tanks for the LNG holding and stuff like that. Uh, you're talking about the, this company being sustainable toward the end, but there are some threats. And uh, you talked about the short-term uh, liquidity of the company. Yes. Uh, that, that's one of the threats. The other one compliance with the, uh, the environmental rules and regulations. Did you look at the overall sustainability of the company in terms of compliance? And then you, did you look into compliance risk as well? Because that's very important. important. And mm -hmm. since part of their activities in Asia, Corporate social responsibility, ethical responsibility, workplace, ethics, and, 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 and overall uh, sustainability in terms of economic performance become very important. Did you look into those issues? Um, yes, I can start here. Is the, they had not a very successful project a few years ago, but it is it is often often to this industry to have a bad project for the five or six years. So this is not a major concern. And um, can you repeat your question, Is that? Uh, basically, with regard to sustainability and uh, compliance risk, uh, you talked about regulations and environmental rules and regulations, and then uh, corporate social responsibility, working, I mean, having operations in Asia. Uh, uh, so. You also mentioned the financial crisis, and may I show you the... Uh, this is their chart from the 2002 and with our projected. And you can see that they had the uh, effect of the business, of the financial crisis only in 2010 because of cost of reimbursable nature of their products. So it means that they still generate a lot of cash uh, during the real financial crisis years, uh, which helped them to save their position in competitive. I would like to add to what you were saying about corporate governance. Mm -hmm. uh, their corporate governance, eight out of 12 of their uh, executive board is independent, which is, is pretty good in, as far as the industry standards is concerned. Uh, they are very transparent. They uh, have a lot of access to their information is online. Uh, they are a company that, from our research, appears to be a very strong corporate government. So they have, they're very structured. Uh, they have uh, guidelines for their, their, their ethical behavior, and uh, we didn't see any issues there. If we talk about corporate governance and sustainability, we get into areas of economic sustainability or long-term financial performance. As you mentioned, governance uh, uh, performance become important, ethics, corporate social responsibility, as well as environmental. So you talked about some of them, but overall we have to bring everything together. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I, I, I believe that uh, when we looked at the overall picture, when we looked at their position in the Asia Pacific, their focuses in what well, eighty-five percent of their of their projects coming from outside the U.S. Uh, yeah, that's very important that they that they that they need that we need to have that big picture idea. I, I believe that uh, CBNI is uh, very uh, diverse. That's one thing that they pride themselves on: diversity. Uh, they're they're a large organization, seventy operations going on all the time. So yeah, we uh, looked at that and we were pretty satisfied with the results of that. If I might, with the, with the strong corporate governance and uh, with the high HSE performance, uh, these are all setting CBNI and I uh, apart from their competition and, and making them more um, marketable and in turn uh, generating more contracts, more awards, 
and down the road that will increase uh, revenue, jobs, and, and overall uh, increase block line. Just a clarification purposes, do your numbers include the shop acquisition? Uh, no, however, uh, we will need to show, and uh, if you don't mind, I can show you the, uh, there's a big section over right here. Uh, show acquisition effects and uh, show multiple relations, and uh, I will start with the uh, five forces. Uh, that's how we project the five forces model to change after the acquisition of show. We see that uh, CB and I, we need in the most acquisition. Uh, so they became more diversified and more sustainable. Um, and this slide is uh, this, uh, this. This is the transaction value. Uh, transaction value of Shaw is 5.1 billion dollars, and that's the price we value Shaw is 5.4 billion dollars. Price per share, and uh, taking everything into account and some. Uh, the final price with Shaw is going to be 89.44. So shareholders of CBNI will uh, will gain profit from this. And uh, we didn't actually take too much goodwill into consideration, but Shaw as well is a well-known company. And uh, we took, um, as you can see, the synergy effect is $120 million, but this is only like the instant uh, synergy which can be uh, implemented by eliminating the redundancy in the organization. But uh, when the CBI, CBNI will implement Shaw into their supply chain, because uh, currently they were subcontracting each other. So after they will implement uh, Shaw into their supply chain, the synergy effect will be higher. Yeah, just uh, get that right. Um, so the, the standalone value of CBNI, the equity market capitalization is 8.2 billion, right? Yes. So standalone show and equity market capitalization is 5.4 million, right? Yes. So how can the pro forma, I assume equity market capitalization forecast be 8.6 billion? Uh, because the, we calculated that by gathering the what's, what value will the show bring to the CBNI? What value per share will it bring to the CBNI? Well, how is the acquisition finance? I mean, are you going to issue equity? Ah, uh, yes, they, they, they will issue $3.2 billion in equity uh, by issuing shares. Mm -hmm. And um, they will take $1.9 billion loan, but they will finance most of this loan by the cash on the short account. Mm -hmm. So how, how did you calculate the whole form of post-acquisition value? Yeah. Uh, I, what I did is just basically um, added uh, the value and just subtract what they paid for this value and uh, plus synergy effects and that's how 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 their value will increase after the acquisition so what when you when you when you buy something uh, you spend money so if, if you have one hundred dollars you can buy something for which was one hundred and twenty dollars you gain twenty dollars okay so so if your standalone value for C B and I is a Okay. And then you issue 3.5 billion in equity, right? Uh, yeah. And, and then you come up with 8.6 billion in equity, then you pretty much destroy 3 billion dollars worth of share on value, if that would be the calculation, right? So it's, it's incorrect, I think, because that's the one. Uh, other questions? I think we have to wrap it up here. Uh, time's up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.